Hey friends, this is Odie here. We are going to have revival for the next three Friday nights on YouTube. These are not current services. They are the last three revival services that my dad preached in 2023. They were part of the crusade in Ogon State, Obeokuta, Nigeria. So please share with others and join us as we have revival in Nigeria the next three Friday nights. Thank you. You may sit down. The Lord has been so good to me. He brought me from way down here. He lifted me up. Set my feet on higher ground. He put a song in my heart. He put a praise in my mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. You brought me a mighty, mighty long way. Hallelujah. 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 It is so good to be here with you tonight. I appreciate all your kindness to me. You have been so good to my family. And I thank you for that. You don't have to receive me. There are thousands and thousands of preachers. You receive, receive me so well. Thank you for that. I really, really mean that. It is no sacrifice for us to come. It can be difficult at times. It can be expensive at times. But it is worth it all. It is a great privilege for us to be here. 16 years we've been coming I hope God gives us grace to continue. I believe he's going to give us grace tonight. I believe he's going to help us tonight. Can you say amen? I believe he's going to help you tonight. I believe his word is going to speak to us I believe that God's word is powerful. My words are empty. My words save no one. My words, my words heal no one. But the word of God breaks the chain. The word of God brings healing and health and strength. Amen. 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 Turn and read with me in Luke chapter 10. I'm just going to read one verse. Luke chapter 10 Verse number 30. 30. 30. Okay. 
Luke 10 and 30. And Jesus, and Jesus answering said, Jesus sit down, what we pay? A certain woman went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And fell among thieves. Which stripped him of his raiment. And wounded him. And departed from him. Leaving him half dead. Would you stretch your hands toward heaven? And ask the Lord to touch us in this place. Father, we come before you. We are very sincere in our prayer. I cannot do this without you. I cannot speak your word without your help. I stand in this place Lord, by the invitation of my friend and with the support of my friend and I proclaim your word to the very best of my ability. Give me strength to preach and let your word go forth. Yeah. Speak to people on these grounds. Yeah. Speak to women, men and women beyond these grounds. Yeah. We will receive your word. We will believe your word. Yeah. And we will respond yeah. to your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 They beat this man. And they left him wounded. And they left him half dead. I need to preach to you a few minutes tonight. About wounded and half dead. We do not know this man's name. His identity is not given to us. They call him a certain man. A certain man was wounded. A certain man was left half dead. We know nothing much about this man. Except what we are told in the scriptures. He is going from Jerusalem to Jericho. He is, he is attacked by thieves. He is robbed of everything that he possesses. Even his clothes are taken. He is severely wounded. He is in such danger that he is about to lose his life. Jesus said, He is half dead. That is a pretty bad condition. If you are half dead, you are only half alive. This man was wounded and half dead. Let me begin with a question tonight. Who is to blame for this man's condition? My brethren, who is to blame for this man's condition? Is he to blame? Is this man to blame? I say no. Jesus never blames him. Blame lies at the feet of the thief and the robber. If there had been no thief, 
This man would be well. If there had been no thieves. This man would be on his way to Jericho. If there, if there had been no thieves. This man would not be wounded. He would not be bleeding. If there had been no thieves. He would still have have his money. He would still have his clothes. If there had been no thieves, he would not be in the ditch. Do you understand that? The ditch. Here is the road. And over here is the ditch. In the ditch is where the trash is. The refuse. He's laying there with the rubbish. And the thief is to blame. We must not blame this man. Because Jesus never blames him. This man is in the ditch. And it's not his fault. Sometimes when people are wounded. When people are hurt in life. We are tempted to blame them. But they are not to blame. If you came to this place tonight and life has wounded you, you feel like you are bleeding. You feel like you are bleeding emotionally. It's the fault of the thief. We still have thieves in our day. And who is the number one thief? Number one thief is Satan. Jesus said, He came to steal, to kill, and destroy. He is the ultimate thief. There's never been another thief like Satan. He comes in and he takes our purity. He comes in and he takes our innocence. He will steal our family. He will steal our children. He will steal our children. Steal our wife or your husband. At your call, he will steal our health. And he throws us in the ditch. And he leaves us wounded. And half dead. The thief brought sin into the world. And sin is to blame for it all. Amen. Amen. When I was just a child, they used to sing a song in our church. And the song was called Sin is to Blame. Sin is to blame for all sorrow. Sin is to blame for it all. See the man in the prison? Sin is to blame. Listen to the story he tells. Sin is to blame. Do you see children that are hungry for bread? Sin is to blame. When their daddy is a drunkard and their mother is dead, sin is to blame. Heartbroken mothers, all sad and alone, 
Help us and need it. And you are in need of the words and you don't need a waste to call home. And you go see the collective benefit. Sin is to blame. Amen. Amen. We have so much hate in our world. So much hurt in our world. So many of you are hurting tonight. You're hurting in your body. You're hurting in your mind. You're hurting in your heart. So much hurt in this world. And sin is to blame. For it all. The thief went into the garden. And he deceived Adam and Eve. And he stole from them their godliness. And man was cast into sin. And sin has ruined humanity. Everything wrong in the world can be traced back to sin. Am I preaching right, my brothers? Everything wrong in this world can be traced back to sin. It doesn't mean that you are living in sin. It means that we are living in a world of sin. Satan is the prince and power of the air. He rules in this world. And in his ruling, he is destroying lives. He is tearing apart families. He is killing young people. He is pulling them away from God. He is pulling them away from righteousness. He is pulling them away from godliness. Satan's goal is to destroy every family. Satan's goal is to destroy every man of God. His goal is to destroy every church. Satan's goal is to destroy a Bayakuta. His goal is to destroy Ogun State. And even Nigeria. His goal is to destroy my home country. And he is doing a very good job of it. There is so much sin. So much sickness. So much suffering. Because of the thief. The thief has dragged humanity in the ditch. Six thousand years of sin. Six thousand years of suffering. And pain. And despair. And the thief is to blame. Do you understand what I'm preaching Can you say amen? Am I preaching right, my brother? It's not your fault. It's not the choir's fault. It's not Brother Kuye's fault. It's not Brother Shabanke's fault. Can you to me a moment? It's not your governor's fault. It's not your president's fault. It is Satan's fault. The thief is to blame. Amen. Amen. This man is in the ditch. He is wounded and half dead. And he is not to blame. What happens when the man of God comes by him? First there is a priest. Walking down the road. And the priest sees him in the dead. He sees that he is wounded. He sees that he is robbed. He's half dead. 
What does the priest do? Does someone know? Tell me what he did. He walked on by. The Bible said he bypassed him. He had no time for him. The man who should have helped him. Did not even consider helping he him. He passed by on the he other side of the road. So then a second man comes. This is also a man of God. This is the Levite. He is of the tribe of Levite. The tribe of the priest. And what does he do? He passes by. But the Bible said, but he came and looked upon him. So he did not just walk on by. He came and looked closer. He came to that side of the road. And he looked at the man in the ditch. And then he passed by. You know what that says to me? He looks him over. Probably wondering. Do I know him? Is he my brother? Is he my uncle? Is he my neighbor? He looks closely at him. But he does not know him. Therefore, because he does not know him, he passes by on the other side. He bases his help on whether he knows him or not. If he knew him, he might have helped him. But he did not know him. So he did not consider helping him at all. These two men came the same place as this man in the ditch but they had no sympathy for him they had no mercy on him and they showed no Kindness. They did not comfort him. They had no tenderness toward him. And they would not help him. These men were the representatives of God. Do you agree with me? These men were the representatives of God. Yet they would not help him. This man is wounded. This man is half dead. He must have help. But these men would not help him. I am preaching tonight to men and women in this place on these grounds and in the shadows around these grounds I am preaching to men and women that have been wounded by this world some of you are sick in your mind some of you are sick in your spirit some of you are sick in your body. Your marriage is sick. Your children are sick. Your grandchildren are sick. You're looking for help. And so far, there have been no one that will help you. No one has 
even tried to help me. But I have come to preach to you tonight. These two men, the priest. And the Levite that bypassed this land. They are not the only men on the road. I said they are not the only men on the road. There is one more man. I said there is one more man. That man is going to help him. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus call this man? He does not call him a priest. He does not call him a Levite. He does not say he's a pastor. He does not say he's an evangelist. Jesus does not even say he is a Jew. He is a Samaritan. A man that is normally hated by the Jews. And we have every reason to believe this man in the ditch is probably a Jew. The priest was a Jew. The Levite was a Jew. They should have helped him. But they would not even help their own. And so Jesus says a good Samaritan comes. And he does not pass by. The good Samaritan goes down into the ditch. And he takes time for this man. He does not know this man. He is probably a different nation than this man. He has probably been taught to hate this man. And the man in the ditch has probably been taught to hate him. But the good Samaritan pays no attention to the color of his skin. He pays no attention to the robe that he wears. He does not care what he looks like. He just knows he is wounded. And he is half dead. And he needs someone to bless him. Thank God for someone who will bless you while you are wounded and half dead. And someone say amen. Amen. Who is this good Samaritan? Who does he represent? Who does he represent? The man represents us in the ditch. Oh no, no, show you I know what The thieves represent Satan. The, the priest and the robber and the priest and the Levite represent the religious world. There is only one that's willing to get off the road. Oh no, no, There's only one. And the that's willing to go down in the ship. There's only one that's willing to pour in the oil in the wine. There's only one that's willing to pick him up. There's only one that's willing to set him on his own feet and take him to the end and turn him over to the end and pay the man's bill. I the one that's willing to save us. I only know one that's willing to heal us. I only know one that's willing to sacrifice and pay our bill. And his name is Jesus. you tonight. 
tonight. I said, Jesus is looking for you tonight. He is on the road. Where others have come and bypassed you. Others have looked at you. I want me to walk and kept on walking. They had no help for you. They had no mercy for you. But Jesus is on that same road. He said, Jesus is on that same road. And he's coming down into the ditch. To heal your body tonight. Let's heal your mind tonight. Save your soul. Right here. Tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel him in this place. I knew that he would be here. He told me he would be here. Where two or three are gathered together. And my name. There am I in the midst of So I knew when I stood here tonight. I began to preach this to you. I knew that these brothers would be with me. I knew that this brother would be with me. And therefore I knew that Christ would be here. I knew that Jesus would be looking for you. Because I know you're here. I know you are broken. I know you are hurting. I know you've been beaten. And I know you've been robbed. But I came to tell you something. You are important to Christ. To the world, you are another nameless face. They don't care about you. You're just another mouth to feed. You're just another person to take care of. The authorities of this world do not know about you. They do not know your name. They do not care that you are hurt. You may have come here physically hungry tonight. And the governor does not care. He may say he cares when he wants you to vote. But where is he now? He cannot take care of you. He does not have the resources to take care of you. You are just another person. You are not important in this world. But you are important to Christ. You are important to America. God made you. God formed you in your mother's world. God has had his eye on you. Before you were born. I said he cares for you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And underneath of you are the everlasting arms of God. I feel the good Samaritan here. I said I feel the good Samaritan here. I feel, the good Samaritan here. I feel him walking down the road. He's not walking on the other side. He's walking on your side. I said he's walking on your side. He's looking over in the ditch. And he sees you. He sees that you are wounded. He sees that you are half dead. And I feel him climbing off the road. Down into the ditch. It may be wet 
in that day. Yes, you know what going on. You may be. There may be rubbish in that day. Yes, you know what going on. Moye dot. You know what you're doing. There may be weeds in that day. Yes, you go away. You know what going on. But he does not care. Yes, you go be chita go go. You know why he does not care? Yes, you let you be chita go go. Because you. Are in that ditch. Oh, wow. you know what, boy. He's coming for you. Oh, He's reaching for you. I feel him tonight. I'm reaching for you. As I reach my arms, to you. I cannot save you. I cannot heal you. I cannot give you peace and joy. But he can. I said he can. And he's gonna do it tonight. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I said he is gonna do it tonight. He's looking for you. Oh wow! Wounded and half dead. He sees you there in your place. Oh wow! You may be ashamed of your place. You may be ashamed for anyone to see you. I don't want anybody to know how I'm hurting. I don't want anybody to know the wounds that I bear. I don't want anybody to know that I am half dead. But he already knows. I said Jesus already knows. You may not want me to know. You may not want your pastor to know. But Jesus already knows. And he came for you tonight. He came for you tonight to pick you up and to make you whole. Amen. Amen. He wants to put you back together. I said he wants to put you back together. We have a nursery rhyme. A rhyme that we tell our children. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this. Are you familiar with Humpty Dumpty? Yes. Humpty Dumpty? Yes. Humpty Dumpty. Yes. Humpty, Dumpty. Yes. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. That's what the... The nursery rhyme said he sat on the wall. And he, and he had a great fall. And he said, All the king's horses and all the king's men could not put Humpty Dumpty back together do you, do you understand what I'm saying? He has fallen. He cannot get up. He is broken into pieces. And the king's horses and the king's men could not help him. But I know someone who can. Jesus can help him. I'm not looking for the king's men to help me. I'm not looking for the government to help me. I'm looking for Jesus to help me. I'm looking for Jesus to help me. And I'm looking for him to help me. You would you bow your heads with me a moment? I can see you some out there in the shadows. And I'm going to ask you to participate in this part of the service. If you are wounded, if you are broken, if you are hurting in your heart, if you are hurting in your mind, 
If you are hurting in your soul, I want you to lift your hand up right now. I want you to acknowledge, my brother, I am wounded. I have been hurt. The world has been hurting me. The world has been beating me. And I am looking to be healed. Lift your hand up. No one, it's okay. All the way up. Let me see your hand. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for admitting that. As I said sometimes Thank you for admitting that. As I said sometimes sometimes we don't like people to know. We are hurting. But without admitting it, we will never get help. For every one of you that raised your hand, I believe the good Samaritan is here for you tonight. I said I believe the good Samaritan is here for you tonight. Would you please stand up on your feet if you are able to do so. If you are able, please stand up. If you have been wounded, do you believe Jesus is here? The priest has passed by. The Levite has passed by. But the good Samaritan is here. Jesus is here. I want you to come out of your seat. Come down to the front. And we are going to pray for you. These men of God are going to pray for you. We're going to believe that your wounds are going to be healed. We are going to believe that you are going to be brought back to life. You are going to live again. I said you are going to live again. You do not have to pass through this life. Wounded anymore. You can be healed. Healed in your spirit. Healed in your mind. Healed in your body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please stretch your hands toward heaven. I want you to believe with me. You must believe tonight. Believe that Jesus is here. Believe that he came for you. You say he came for my brother. He came for my sister. You must believe that he came for you. Do you believe? Say I believe. Say I believe. I believe Jesus came. I believe Jesus came. For me. For me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe Jesus came. For me. For me. Glory, glory. I want you to lift your voice. I want you to lift your voice. We're going to pray for you. I want you to pray for yourself. I want you to lift your voice. Lord, I'm in the ditch. Lord, I am wounded. Lord, I need to be healed. Lord, I need you to pick me up. Lord, I need you to help me. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Lord, my grandchildren, I want to hear you. Son. My brothers and sisters, I want to hear you. I tell you, you are faithful, son. I believe. Hold on, what the call? That you are here to hear me. Do not silence me. I said, Lord, I believe. Hold on, what the call? That you are here. Do not silence me. To heal me in the name of Jesus. Hold on, Mr. Lord, you can't just say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. for the next three Friday nights. These are not correct services. These are recordings from the crusade in o They were recorded as part of the three, two, one, in early December in Ogon State, Nigeria and Abayakuta. My these were the last services my dad preached. They were recorded in December as part of the Gospel Crusade in Ogon State, Abayakuta, Nigeria. Invite others to join you as well. We would love to have everyone with us. These are not correct services. <laughs> These are not correct services. These are not correct services. <laughs> <laughs> 